Hey, hey, and welcome to the Hope Relentless Marriage Podcast. We are so happy that you've joined us, and it's a big deal that you are taking the time. And I say this every podcast if you are a regular, but I will not tire of saying it because it's worthwhile for you to spend time with us, with with other resources to grow in your relationship. And so I want to say well done again and congratulate you on take putting your marriage first in this regard. And so uh I want you to remember marriages impact families, families impact communities, and communities impact the world. It's a ripple effect. And so we are literally changing the world one marriage at a time. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here, uh, excited to be with you, babe, as we talk about today's topic, should marriage take work or <laughs> should marriage just be easy? This can seem mm. like a simple idea. Uh, but oftentimes when we're counseling couples, this idea of work and ease comes into play in the conversation. Yeah. And it's one of those things that I think when we first get married, you know, the honeymoon stage and even a lot of the dating stages, we just are kind of on cloud nine. And, and part of it is our mentality. And we've talked about mindset on this podcast just maybe a few a few weeks ago. But part of it is where the mentality is, oh, you know, I'm marrying the love of my life and everything they do is just wonderful because you have your rose colored glasses on. And so then when it's all said and done, you've been married a couple months, a couple years, and things aren't going as we think they should should be going. We're we're thinking, gosh, did I marry the wrong person? But really, we're just missing that that reality of marriage taking intentionality, marriage taking work. Yeah, and it's interesting because the dating phase is is fundamentally different than the married phase, right? The oh, yeah. dating phase, you might have your own houses, you might have your own jobs. And so the time you spend together, it's fun. It's out at a new restaurant. It's going to a concert. It's, it's an experience of sorts. And then you go back to your own homes or you go back to your own jobs or you go back to your own life and you kind of do things the way you want. Whereas marriage, suddenly you go to sleep together, you wake up together, the dirty clothes, the dirty dishes, the household chores, the things that you know aren't sexy, aren't fun, but the responsibilities of running a house. And so it's easy to kind of fall into that rut and, and but also potentially to have false expectations. Yeah. Life takes work. You know, we think yeah. about any area of my life where I've had some level of success or strength took work, whether mm -hmm. it was when I was younger and I was going to school, getting good grades took work, getting a promotion in a job takes work, being in good shape takes mm -hmm. work, especially as I'm getting older, it takes <laughs> apparently more work or or maybe the key is is less food is maybe the bigger thing but maybe both, maybe both. <laughs> but the reality is for something to be healthy and strong it usually meant that we had a level of intentionality and a plan in place that's why that area of our life is thriving and so it's the same thing with marriage and i think this idea of should marriage take work or if i find the right person everything should just kind of be easy and fall into place it's just it's a false expectation that'll set us up for a lot of frustration for us and for our spouse right and one thing that i've noticed is just the word work <laughs> can rub us the wrong way. And I think because a lot of times when we think of work, we think of that nine to five job that we cannot wait to leave and start our weekend with, or we think of, for a weird reason, I have this idea when I think of work, I think of like in the field, like gardening, like I gotta get my shovel and really dig in, in the hot Arizona sun. And so which I you, think- Which what... you've never done. <laughs> never gardened in your life <laughs> never never oh man i wish i could but yep never done that but that's what i think of just this negativity and i think i'm not alone when i think of the word work and what it means to me what it brings up so i want you to take a moment and think of when i say you got to work in your marriage what does it bring up for you 
And is it negative? Just take a moment to think about that. Yeah. I mean, that's, I don't like that word, right? <laughs> I mean, you think about culturally, um, ah, it's time to go to work versus the weekend. It's time to play. It's time to have fun. And, you know, maybe a better word to think about is should marriage require investment? Investment mm. makes me feel like I'm like a financial baller with extra money to put into the market or buy property or something that'll grow, right? And uh, yeah. but regardless of the word, the answer is yes, it does. Yes. And it's funny because to me, investment is kind of like, ooh, that's like my money. It, it takes, and that might be for me, I don't even know if that's positive. So the point is, whatever you need to say to reframe that word work into a positive word, maybe for me, intentionality is something that I like. Marriage takes intentions, intentionality, actually planning what you want to do. And even in our marriage, there's an opportunity, an opportunity to, to, you know, plan and, and do things. So whatever word you need to use, I would encourage you to use that because I don't want us to get tripped up on just the, the word work because we're bringing in other ideals of what work means. When it comes to marriage, it is worthwhile intentionality yeah. that we, we put into the marriage and it's, it's very much necessary. And it's one of those things where just like Chad said, if anything is important to us, us, if anything matters to us, we will have that intentionality and we will have that grit and that tenacity and that perseverance. And so one of the things when we think about work in a negative connotation, it makes it difficult to persevere through hard times because we don't want to put in the work because we think if we're working for something, then it means something's wrong. And therefore we just give up. We just say, Hey, this isn't, this isn't working if you will, because we have to put work into it. Yeah. I think you, you kind of ventured into something that we see common with couples when they come to hope relentless for counseling you know, sometimes two, three, four weeks into the counseling, the environment in the home has changed. A lot mm -hmm. of the circumstances haven't changed yet, but what yeah. has changed is the level of intentionality of each mm -hmm. spouse in the home has changed. And so now when there were moments to show gratitude or appreciation or, um, you know, bids of affection, they're taking them, right? They're saying, oh man, that meal you cooked was amazing. Thank you for that. They're finding ways to, to support and encourage each other. And, and they come back and they're like, oh, things are going well. Well, the difference is they're putting in the work, right? They're, they're yep. taking the yep. opportunities. They're, they're seizing moments of intentionality and it changes the environment. And so kind of mm -hmm. this idea of should marriage take work? You know, the reality is anything worth, worthwhile takes work takes intentionality, takes planning, takes, takes something from us. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but when we do, we get to reap a fundamentally different environment. And I think oh, yeah. one of the things that can be challenging about marriage, it's, it's the same thing that's challenging about life is every season requires us to continue showing up and potentially mm -hmm. different. You know, if I was working for a boss, they're not interested that I showed up last week. They're interested, <laughs> are you showing up this this week, right? And so yeah. some of these things that naturally make sense to us in other areas, maybe our health and fitness or in our careers, the same principles apply in our marriages. If I was dating my wife when we were dating and that was one of the reasons we got married, well, if I want the relationship to thrive, we need to continue to go on dates and have experiences uh, and, and moments of fun because life has challenges. So let's make sure we prioritize enjoying moments together. Right. That's good. And so speaking of the work or intentionality, however you want to put it, Chad, you mentioned the seasons of marriage. And sometimes when I think of seasons, I like to think of just the different, the different preparations, if you will, will that we go through. So for example, you have pre-marriage, premarital. And so the work that you put in in premarital times is going to look different than the work you're going to put in when you are struggling and married. And yeah. then it's also going to look different. The work you put in is going to look different when you're married and happy. There's always the, the, the lifeline, if you will, is the work or 
is the intentionality. That's never going to change, no matter if you're pre-married or married and happy, married and struggling. There's going to be that intentionality. But sometimes the in intensity can look different depending on the season of life you're in. Like in pre-marriage, like I sa said earlier, we're on cloud nine. So the work might feel a little bit different. It might feel fun, exciting, hopeful. When you are struggling in marriage, the work might feel actually hard. It might feel different than in pre-marriage and that's okay. Yeah, That is okay because you're in a different moment in your marriage. And then when you're married and happy, the work might feel different as well. The work might look like scheduling a vacation to, to make sure you keep that connection together. And so that's different. So it's just recognizing you will have different intensities when it comes to the work that, that is involved. Yeah, as the, as the seasons adjust, the the requirements will, will pivot. I think that's one of the things right. we see in marriages that kind of thrive season to season to season is the intentionality, uh, but also mm -hmm. somewhere in there recognizing when the season has changed. So the right. work or the intentionality needs to adjust as well. You know, one of the things I think for me early on that helped me realize that marriage takes work and realistically that my marriage is worth the work that yeah. I give it was even just on an individual level. You know, when I started to go through um, Celebrate Recovery and the 12 step studies and that work of the journaling and the reading and the reflecting and the sharing, it felt like such a long monotonous season. But in that, as I was putting in the work to become a better version of myself, I realized that there were positive impacts on the marriage. And it mm -hmm. also helped me realize that if my marriage has hit difficult seasons, that I hold in my hands the ability to have a positive impact or influence on our marriage. Because yeah. just by going through Celebrate Recovery and becoming a better version of myself, it helped me be a better husband. And by being a better husband, it helped us have a better marriage. And I think that's mm -hmm. one of the things sometimes we can want our spouse to put in the work. Hey, mm -hmm. our marriage or relationship would be better if my if they would do this or if they would do that. That's good. And yeah. the reality is, as much as I would like to say that you just do what I ask, like that's that's unrealistic, right? And and mm -hmm. I can't control your attitudes and your actions and your behavior. So I think one of the these things around the expectations of the work that is required in a marriage is putting that on ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. What what can I do in this season of our family, of our marriage, of my life to invest and contribute to the marriage? And I think one of those things that highlighted that for me was celebrate recovery. I wasn't going through a marriage workshop. Mm -hmm. I was just becoming a better version of myself and that has a ripple effect. And so it's like, oh, the solution, of course there's things that you can do that would add value to the marriage, but there's things I can do. And if I'm just, yeah. if we're both waiting for the other one, then, you know, uh, unlikely to see any change or growth take place. Yeah, that's so good. And it's also empowering when we start to work on ourselves because that's an action. That's something active we can do rather than kind of sitting back and feeling more like the victim or just a product of our environment. We get to start to mold and shape our own environment. Um, I, I guess I want to shift to an example that that I have when it comes to this concept of marriage takes work and when when that really hit me. And that would probably be year two of our marriage. I, I still remember I was in the shower and I was, I was a little bit frustrated because I felt like I was commu communicating things to you over and over again, the same things that I had communicated. And with you and I, I know... Um, I know you know this, Chad, but those listening, our biggest thing when it came to communication, I think at least, was I would feel a certain way. And then, Chad, you would say, hey, well, well, that's not how I think or that's not the truth of this situation. And therefore, you should not feel that way. <laughs> And I would get really caught up in my feelings. And this was our ongoing perpetual 
argument conversation because I just wanted you to be in my feelings. And yeah, there's, there's a lot that we can talk on regarding this dynamic. But the thing for me where I had to take personal responsibility and recognize, hey, he doesn't exist just to hear my feelings, even when they're irrational. I mean, sometimes they were rational. So that's, that's for another, another day as far as how, how he grew in that. But a lot of times I felt entitled to feel how I felt because that's how I felt. And so it was learning that, you know, what, what work would look like is recognizing, okay, he's not the knight in shining armor prince that does whatever I want him to do whenever I want him to do it. He is a real person with his own feelings, goals, dreams, and everything. And he doesn't exist just to make me happy and to do what I want. And so I know that seems pretty rudimentary as far as how I, how I used to think, but it was almost as if we got married and then we started to have these, these conflicts. And I was so taken aback that I just felt a little hopeless at that time. I'm like, oh gosh, is this, is this what I married into? But I liken it to thinking, okay, I want to walk through a door, but I don't want to open it. It's like, I want to get, I want to get through it. And I, I just, I go, I go up to the door and I just stand there and I don't recognize that it takes work to get through the door. It means I need to actually reach out and open it. And then I get through the door and that's how marriage is. It takes that work as far as showing up is just half the battle, if you will, or half the, half of the whole marriage. It's like, but it really the marriage grows and is defined by the work, the intentionality that you put into it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. I mean, it's funny hearing you share that story from two years and here we are, <laughs> you know, a week away from celebrating 18 years of marriage. I Our know. marriage is oh. about to be an adult. That's kind of fun. Yes. Yes. Um, we're still getting carded when we buy alcohol periodically, <laughs> which has- Praise the Lord. Praise yeah, the Lord. It's, it's exciting. Although that guy was <laughs> said like, whoa, when he saw our IDs last week, you guys are way older than I thought. I didn't know if I should be excited or offended in that moment. I was a little I bit know, of right? I was excited. But it's funny because you're talking about this and the reality is, those dynamics you and I still navigate every day. Yeah. Because yeah. you're more of an emotional and want to share what you're feeling. And I'm more of a what is the problem <laughs> and how do we fix it? So uh, I have no yep. problem with you sharing the emotions, but I jump to wanting to fix them like immediately. Oh, problem, fix it. Problem, fix it. And you're like, no, I just want you to be present. And so this is something for us that it still takes work and intentionality now for us to navigate those conversations in a way where we both feel heard and respected and valued. And so this dynamic of, you know, being married 18 years hasn't changed the requirement of intentionality to make the mm -hmm. season that of life that we're in still, still enjoyable and still something that honors God and, and builds a family yeah. and sets an example for our kids. All of that stuff still requires a level of intentionality and purpose. Yeah. I see young couples and they come to me distraught and they're just like, they've been married a year, two years, and they, they're just like, ah, we're not communicating well. We're just we're not understanding one another and they're really just shot. And I just want to say to them, and I do sometimes I'm like, Hey, you're doing better than you think you are. And especially as I learn the upbringing in the past that they have and what they've been through, and it's just helping them to get a reality check, because I think that's a big thing is we don't hear about the work and intentionality it takes in marriage. And it's like, Hey, you're right on track. You know, it, we worry when you don't care that you, you're not yeah. communicating well, because that means there's, there's nothing you can grow from. You know, we worry when you sweep it under the rug and you just move past it because it's a little difficult. It's a little uncomfortable to talk about it. That's when we really want to address that kind of attitude because that will come back that will bite you later or it will bite you in the present and you'll find yourself saying we have irreconcilable differences in the present. So it's one of those things that, you know, you, you're doing better than you think you are and really you're winning as long as you don't give up. You want to yeah. work through it and you want to take the time, get the help to work through these things because all of us, I mean, Chad just said, we've been married for 18 years, July 17th, and we still work on it but it's good work. You, you start to mature 
in how you're working on it. Initially, it's very discouraging. And then as you're, as you get through it, as you're going, maturing through it, it's, it's more, okay, I know this, I know this, this cycle, if you will, and I'm prepared to talk about it in a way that's loving and respectful. Yeah. So let's, let's, uh, let's land this plane and let's maybe give some practical action steps of what this can look like in terms of, you know, how somebody listening could implement this. So for me, one of the things that can require quote unquote work or intentionality is date nights. And so if somebody is not currently going on a weekly date night, and I pushed back on weekly for a long time because it just seemed more than it needed. But I do think that, you know, if we push for weekly and we end up three out of four weeks, we're still in a much better spot than like once a month or something. You just, it's easy to forget. So my practical action step is for date nights. And I'll share kind of a quick pivot. Sarah Gale and I have been, uh, we just talked about the other day that this year for us has probably been the best year of date nights, like in terms of consistency. But in the midst of that, they still kind of became like, oh, we got to do a date night. And it was just like, jump in the car, go get food somewhere. And that was it. And so we made a little adjustment that's just minimal, but it, it, makes it more exciting and something we look forward to. And that is just creating themes. And so like for the month of July, we created a theme. We both love Mexican food. And so we're just Mm going to go to four different Mexican restaurants and, you know, try two of my favorite things, tacos and margaritas, and just see environment, food, and, and just it, it's little things. It didn't take much to create that theme, but like, I'm already excited and I've been looking for the restaurant we're going to go to for this weekend. Um, Mm -hmm. and, but that's a sign. It's just a little bit of work. A little bit of intentionality um, can go so far. So what is your action step? I would just say to reframe how you view work when it comes to your marriage. Reframe it to opportunity, intentionality, whatever word is exciting for you because the work is worth it. It's worthwhile. And it's what shapes the marriage into what you want it to be. And then the last thing, and do you have anything else to say before I end it out? Nope. Okay. All right. So the last thing I'll say is what I say always is that if you are married and you're, you're going through anything at all, if you're married and you are happy, if you are almost married, thinking about married marriage, just know that there is always, always hope in, in whatever you're, you're pursuing in your marriage, there's always hope to experience uh, more than, than you can even imagine when it comes to marriage. It just takes that intentionality and that work. We'll see you next time.